Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be comparing two absolutely iconic guitars, the Jazzmaster and the Stratocaster. This is actually my first ever YouTube video, so any feedback in the comments would be really, really helpful. And if you do enjoy the video, I'd really, really, really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. But yeah, let's get on with the video. So firstly, let's just have a little bit of a talk about each guitar. I think if you went up to someone on the street and asked them to draw an electric guitar, maybe 9 times out of 10, this is what they would draw. It was designed by Leo Fender and it first came into production all the way back in October 1954 and since then it's just become a workhorse for so many famous guitarists. You've got the likes of Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, David Gilmour, John Frusciante, Clapton, John Mayer, I mean the list is just endless. Um, it has three pickups, um, neck, middle and bridge, it's got a five-way pickup selector, I think the majority of people watching this probably already know, but uh, neck, neck and middle, middle, middle and bridge, and finally the bridge, it's got two tone controls and a volume. Most strats come set with a floating trim, um, and this specific guitar has a Telecaster neck, which isn't particularly stratty, but I don't think it really makes a huge difference. I think some people would say that it that it does, but um, I would be very impressed if someone could tell the difference just f through hearing it. Um, in terms of pickups, I've got a set of Texas Specials in there at the moment, and they were the pickups that are in Steve Ray Vaughan's signature guitar. They're quite hot, um, and in my opinion, they're just an all-round really great sounding Strat pickup. So despite how successful the Strat and the Tele were in the 1950s, Fender was still really failing to capitalise on, on a pretty specific part of the market, the jazz players. Um, so in the late 50s, Leo Fender set about trying to design a guitar that would really appeal to that demographic, um, and thus the Jazzmaster was born. Unfortunately, he failed in this endeavour, um, and the Jazzmaster was never really picked up by many jazz players. But what he did create was an incredibly versatile guitar that has become synonymous with surf, indie, and uh, alternative rock, and it, it's a really, really great sounding instrument. So the guitar has two pickups. Um, they look a lot like P90s, and are often mistaken for P90s, the Jazzmaster pickups are actually specifically Jazzmaster pickups. They're very similar to the single chords you'll find in a Strat, um, but they're, they're kind of compressed basically. They're, they're like pancake versions of those pickups. I'll show you some, some pictures um, above me there. Um, it's got a rhythm and a lead circuit, which is quite unique. Um, when this switches down, you're in the lead circuit where you have your standard neck, middle two pickups and bridge pickup, and then a volume and a tone. Um, now when you switch this to the rhythm circuit, you've got another volume and a tone here, and when in this position, all of this does nothing. You can turn all the volumes down, turn them up, it won't change anything. Um, the rhythm position is just the neck pickup, and it's a slightly different tonal variation to the neck pickup on the lead circuit. It's a little bit warmer, a lot of the top end is rolled off, um, and it's a cool alternative really. I think some people don't particularly like it, but, but I think it sounds great, um, but I guess you can decide that for yourself. One of my favourite things about the Jazzmaster, and I think perhaps where it sets itself apart from the Strat slightly, is the uh, the tremolo system. Um, I'm someone that really likes playing with a floating bridge because I like using a whammy bar, um, but I I also really like playing in open tunings, and typically those things don't really go together very well because if you've ever tried to tune a guitar with a floating bridge into an open tuning, it's a little bit of a nightmare because you tune a couple of the strings down and then you find all the strings have gone out of tune. Um, but the Jazzmaster has a really clever feature where you can switch this switch from this position to this position and it basically blocks off the, the floating bridge so that you can then tune 
other strings down without them affecting um, the tuning of the, the strings that you haven't touched on the guitar, which is so, so useful. Um, it's really, really great live because it allows you to tune quickly, um, but whilst also giving you the option to use the whammy bar when you're in standard, um, which is which is really great. Um, Pickup-wise, in a specific guitar, I've got a set of 1959 Montes um, Jazzmaster pickups. Um, if you don't know Montes, they're a small boutique pickup maker in the UK. Well, they're not that small, actually. Um, but yeah, they make really, really great pickups, and I couldn't recommend them enough. I think they sound great. So without further ado, let's get into some tones. I'm running everything through my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, um, mic'd up with an SM57 and going straight into Logic. I'm going to keep the settings on the Hot Rod Deluxe exactly the same for both guitars, which should hopefully give you a pretty accurate representation of the tonal characteristics of the two instruments. I'm going to start off with just some clean tones with a little bit of reverb, then maybe add a bit of distortion, a little bit of delay, and maybe a little bit more reverb to kind of showcase some of the ambient tones I think the Jazzmaster really excels at. But yeah, let's get on with it.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed that tone comparison. Uh, let me know which guitar you prefer down in the comments below. I think, at least to my ears, the Jazzmaster sounded a little bit beefier, um, a little bit thicker. It's got those mids and those low ends that I think the Strat perhaps doesn't have, um, but the Strat also sounds really great, and it has that real clarity of a guitar that has a lot of top end. Um, I think it's really, really important as well to remember the context in which you're hearing these two guitars. I think in isolation, the ear can naturally gravitate to a guitar that sounds a little bit thicker, a little bit warmer, because it's all um, because it's all balanced out, essentially. Um, but in a mix, that might not be what you want. Um, often a guitar that has a lot of mid and low range um, can kind of sound muffled out when you've got drums and bass and maybe a rhythm guitar that are all playing in the same frequency ranges as you. Um, so sometimes you want a guitar that has that top end like a Strat to really cut through the mix. But yeah, I think they're both really great sounding guitars. And that pretty much takes us to the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I said earlier, this is my first ever YouTube video. Uh, so let me know how I've done in the comments, anything I can improve on. Um, any feedback would be really, really appreciated. And if you did enjoy the video, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.